It's Akon, ladies and gentlemen. I just can't believe how many hits you have. You had the music industry in a chokehold for a decade. Yeah. <laughs> you want to stay rich? Stay stingy. Fast. I attempted to own a jet. Why? I sold that mother so fast. <laughs> Dream guest of ours, which probably will never happen, is Eminem. And would definitely Bro, do when, the show. The last you make that happen. I give you equity. Your equity? <laughs> I was the only one out of the whole group, I think, that didn't do Fed time. Because you snitch. <laughs> <laughs> Lock in, bro. I'm we got a in. guest today, bro. We got a big, a big guest today. Locking in, Mikey. Especially for '80s babies and '90s, '90s babies and high schoolers from the 2000s. We've like been myself. preparing all, all day, all morning, listening to Akon songs. Akon and Young Jeezy. Don't ever do that again. Trying to take it easy. <laughs> the only way <laughs> to go. go. And so, bro. bro. Uh, if you're looking for me, I'll be on the block with my thing cock, possibly. See, are we going to get copyright for that? Well, we didn't get copyrighted hey. for that country song you sang on the... Yo. Uh, <laughs> bro, I, can I tell you the top secret? I really did think that. I wasn't... I, I pretended at the end to try to make save face, but I thought you were singing you're that. Lying. I swear you're to lying. God. <laughs> I swear to God, bro. Bro, I told you're you lying. to stop singing it because I thought it was a real country song. <laughs> You were making it up in- I got my jeans. I got my truck. I'm having fun. I like to hunt I bugs. Thought, I, thought that was, I swear to you, dude. I thought it was a real song. I really did. I got my steel toe boots on my feet. I'm gonna kick some dust, make some heat. Nice. What's going on with you, bro? How you doing today? How you feeling? Uh, I'm tired. I thought the show was supposed to be at three. I took NyQuil last night. I know. I, this was a weird one. Anytime the 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 time of the show switches like that. I was sleeping. Bro, I hibernate. I fucking hibernate. I need what? to sleep. And everyone has everyone has things about them that they have to combat. Mine is my immune system and my overall durability. It sucks, bro. I'm like a fragile human and I get sick really easy. Can you in, in this? So I need my sleep is what I'm saying. At this age, your current age and your current version of yourself, could you could you just sleep? Like if you didn't have to get up, could you sleep? Like, do you remember the time in your life when you were younger where you would you like if you were hung over, like you wouldn't get out of bed. You'd sleep till 6 p.m. You just yeah. sleep. like, bro, my body forces me to wake up and get out of bed at 839 in you, the morning. You've Otherwise, been like, like that, though. When I was, I, bro, I've always, first off, I've always liked to sleep. Yeah. My whole life, I, I noticed in high school, I didn't like getting up early. In college, I, I just have never liked getting up a early. It was thing for you. you yeah. Said that. Remember when you tried to be a, um, a construct, was it a landscaper? A landscaper, <laughs> yeah, yeah, bro. And they I, told you you had to be there at what time? Like 8, 8 a.m., which isn't even <laughs> that unreasonable. That no, no. Some people started like 6. I know, and so, so I would, I'd be mulching at 8 a.m., and I'd be like, yo, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you, this is part of the reason I work so hard, so I don't have to do manual can, labor. Can I, can I tell you this really quick? <laughs> that, that may be one of the things that you and I relate on the most. <laughs> yeah. I, I did, I did a, a couple different stints in construction, land surveying, concrete pouring, and the hardest thing was, was hearing those early morning birds chirping. Oh, and, my and, God. And, and I, want, and I want to say, like, honestly, a, a massive shout-out to the people that, that have the wherewithal and fortitude to do that work. Yeah. Because, bro, it is it – is, it, it really is super, it's a super honorable profession. It's a they, grind. You're it's building, a, you're making things better, nicer, like, but it is so, it is so hard doing that day after day. Bro. No, and I, I did it all throughout high school because Greg Paul would make me, bro, we would clean out hoarders houses. We'd move bricks from A to B. We'd cut wood all day. Did and you ever I, do demo where you just get to we go did, and wreck That was fun. That was with the good days. F fun, but also, also really hard. Yeah, bro. but at least we got to destroy George stuff. <laughs> yeah, those, those I didn't mind. Yeah. But I'm telling you, bro, like as a kid not getting paid, that was the thing with Greg as well. Yeah. Our payment was Wendy's for lunch, yeah. which would just fuel us to keep <laughs> fucking working. Like he wouldn't pay us. Like, that, like I'll be honest, when my parents got divorced, there was a period of time where I was like, I'd much rather spend time with mom. Yeah. Because we get to go there, she makes us mac and cheese. Yeah. Greg just makes us work for free. <laughs> what was what was Pam doing? What was Pam's profession? Hanging out, playing tennis. <laughs> Stay at home housewife to rich husband doctor. <laughs> nah, but for real, I, I I this is part of the reason I worked so hard because I knew I could work hard. At something I didn't like. Imagine if I did something I did like. Yeah. 
not working hard was fun. Yeah. And so I found stuff I liked and I was working hard at the stuff I liked and it ended up working. I think that's the biggest goal for anybody who's trying to like escape like a, a current profession or a, what they would consider to be a dead end job. Cause it never is. You're always learning something is to, is to try shit. I mean, I've said it and so many other people have said it like at, at, at in your early twenties, late teens, mid twenties, when you have time, you don't have super massive responsibilities, children, all this stuff. Just be out there trying, trying shit. shit. You tried a lot of shit. Tried a lot of not, shit, but not crack. Right. I didn't try crack. I considered it. No, I didn't. I'll be honest. I didn't. I tried to sound cool. You never even did power. Never did. Right? Never even done cocaine. That's crazy because that's a big thing with the Hollywood elite. I know, but I'm and not the, the in Hollywood, nor that. am I an elite. I mean, it's, I just, debate, it's really debatable at this point, dude. Like, no. I, I've, we've grown apart. I don't know what you're doing in your spare time. I have seen some notes, some manifestos. Just playing backgammon. I'm just playing backgammon with my fiance, yeah. to be honest. And we, we wordle. I mean, Illuminati plays backgammon. It's a, it's a, it's an Illuminati. It game. isn't, you know what though? It is an elite game. So I've been told like, uh, like the people in Stad. Yeah, of course. They play a lot of, course, of backgammon. Of course. In like oligarchs basements. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. That chess, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't think, I don't think chess is much. You I know what I'm the telling you, I think is? it's, it's backgammon's like last st step before the top. Like when you get to that real top, like where you have hit squads and all the shit, like super elite is battleship. Yo. I'm not kidding. I'm dead serious, bro. B4! You just sunk my, my fucking battleship. I love battleship. Dude, what a great game, dude. Remember it had a voice that came out of the box? What are you talking about? There was there was one that had an had audible sounds. Whoa. Yeah, maybe I had the rich people version. I don't That's know. some high quality battleship. Wait, I hear somebody going crazy. Someone's got a someone's got a hey, security confirmed that there's no threat right now. It's not a threat. Scott's eating pasta, bro. He doesn't care. Yeah, Scott. Dude, Scott, bro, you got to fuel that six foot. Actually, you're seven foot frame. He's what, seven feet tall? So, Scott's at least seven foot five. Teammate Khan. Yeah. How are you, bro? Going, Dude, you guys even wore the same shirt, bro. You got the same shirt. How you doing, man? <laughs> bro, you could, you could just. Hey, what's up, bro? Teammate Khan, how are you guys? What's up, guys? Wow. How you doing? How you doing? It's. It's it's my favorite part to see the team yeah. of the guest. They're always so cool. Dude, he got a crazy. He got a cool team, ass bro. team. Yeah, no, girls. You got a, girls you got a cool on. team, eh, Con? Damn, bro. Oh, damn. Wife and son. Hell yeah. Hell, yeah. do you want do you want to come sit? Well, wait. You want to say a thing? Do you got a thing? Or do you not? Even no, want Dylan. It? Dylan wrote. You wrote an intro for me, yeah. but I'll be honest with you. Is it stupid? It's not dumb. It's not dumb. It's good, Dylan. I don't know if I'm gonna do the intros anymore. <laughs> you know what? You gotta just do what you gotta do. Bro. It's. It's Akon, you know? How much of an intro do, do, nah, do we need? If you're coming and clicking on the podcast, you know who Akon is. No, nah, what's up? Would you be willing to abandon intros f starting I, today? I, make, I'd make, rather make, just, I'd rather do them off the cuff. No, could you make a clean statement right now? We are no longer doing those those bullshit I don't know intros. if I'm prepared to do that. <laughs> <laughs> like, this would be the show to announce it on. No, look, look, look. Everybody hates I'll do, I'll do. Oh, my God, the plant. Oh, no. Oh, oh Lord. Yeah, it's, it's the, the, plant, the plant disagrees. Intros. I'll do, I'll do an intro. Yeah, yeah. The plant was like, no. Right, look, look, look. <laughs> <laughs> Here, this is for you, plant. He's got the most hits out of any artist in the world. He's one of the most popular musicians in the world. He is an entrepreneur. He's a humanitarian. He's a musician. Philanthropist. He's a philanthropist. It's Akon, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Amazing intro. Amazing intro. <laughs> the yeah. most hits out of anyone in the world. Off the cuff, I think, is the best way. Dude, this morning, we were all listening to Akon songs. Mm -hmm. And... I just can't believe how many hits you have. I can't no. believe how many features you have. You had the music industry in a chokehold for a decade. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I remember that. Bro, bro, but, but not it was just all the, the part of the plan at that time. Every, every strip club, every street corner, mm -hmm. every high school kids, you know, Nissan Altima. Yeah. Like, bro, you were coming out of every speaker in the world. By the way, during what I consider to be the golden era of hip hop. If you were at the at the highest level of hip hop during 50 Cent, during, you know, Dipset M, all that shit that was going right. on when New York had the crown in the early 2000s, mid 2000s. Dude, you were you I were at the top that. of that shit, bro. I didn't even think about that, bro. Like, you right. Damn, <laughs> shit. Nah, you knew, bro. I what, swear like, I did. When it was in the heat of it, surely. You're, you don't know. That's what I'm saying. Like, I see, I see. Like, I think it has to pass for you to realize the kind of tornado you was actually in. Mm. Cause it's, it's literally a hurricane. You got everything spinning around you at the same time, right? Mm. Until you get out, you don't really know what those things are. I've heard this before from, from people on our show who have done a really significant thing during a time and then afterwards been like, I didn't really comprehend what was happening at the time. Absolutely. But, but I mean, Akon, 
Surely you knew you were up to something. <laughs> no, I was definitely up to something. <laughs> I just didn't know how much impact at that time that it was going to generate. You know what I mean? It was just such a different sound, bro. It was such a different sound that people weren't used to. I remember I, uh, even even all the way up to like 2007, I illegally downloaded Curtis, the 50 album, right? Yeah, I did too. So Dude, I'm, I'm, like, I'm like Napster. I bought the LimeWire, baby. Yeah, LimeWire, right? <laughs> and the only song that wouldn't play, it would get stuck, was I'll Still Kill, which was one wow. of the first songs off the album that you were on. Right. And, and it was such an incredible song. And I was driving around. New Haven, Connecticut, and I was doing dirt, bro. I was driving around an <laughs> Infinity G35. Yo, was, it, everybody had an Infinity then. Oh, and that's that's what I you was at least streets, in Connecticut, man. If you was in the streets, yo, Infinity was like the fucking, <laughs> that was the Maybach. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Yeah. The G35, I had the 60 yeah. with the leather. I was going, yeah. I was picking up some shit and doing some shit, and that song was the one I wanted to listen to, but I never could. So then when it came out on streaming, now every time I hear it, it makes me so happy. I'm no, like, I finally got it. You know what I'm saying? Bro, but you have endless, endless, just, just classics starting with Locked Up, you know, uh, uh, Eminem, uh, Smack That, uh, Snoop, uh, you know, all, all, all these songs, dude, that, that just are the hottest hits for any karaoke night, bro. Like no, you gotta be the most sung person at any karaoke night, bro. I think the one that I've played the most is, uh, I just had sex with the Lonely Island. Yeah. Come on, baby. That's the sleeper right there. Come on, baby. That's, That's the, the baby maker. The, I, I, I played it this morning. You know, I was yeah. just dancing around my room. <laughs> Dude, when, when the Lonely Island approached you. That was you the with funnest the, record I ever did. No way. I swear. No I way. Was, That's awesome. That record was amazing. We had so much fun making that record. Dude, when I saw you do a comedy song, you know, for the right. first time. I, I Back then I was like, oh, that's that's cool. Akon's funny. Right. He, he has that funny bone in his body. But uh, I think it became the anthem for sexual intercourse. <laughs> or post, post-sexual yeah, intercourse. Post -sexual. Yeah, yeah. No, because he had he had the, the lead-ins. Like, um, right. uh, yeah, I want to love you. This yeah, smack yeah. Exactly. I just had sex, uh, like back to back. Oh, you yeah. were telling a story. I was telling a story. <laughs> and it's funny because even in my show, I tell a story like that, but it's like an imaginary story. So it's crazy. when we were preparing for this show, our producer Dylan made a comment. He's like, he literally was so successful in music that he couldn't do music anymore, right? It's just, and you pivoted in a, in a really significant way into, into business and entrepreneurship. Uh, it, I mean, is that the case? Because I feel like you could probably still make hits. You have, a, you have an amazing sound, like Mike said, but right. wh wh what's up with the music career? Well, yeah, for you, it kind of is kind of right, but now it kind of revolved back into I have to do music. It's like it's not even a question no more. It's a must. Could you miss it? Because you miss it or why? Well, one, because I do miss it more than anything, right? Because mu like music was a hobby for me in the beginning. I was a singer songwriter first, right? And just happened to decide to put out records of my own and got super successful as an artist, but still was currently writing and producing for other artists. So when I got the music money, I kind of invested it into other things like, you know, development, energy and things like that. And then it became to the point where I was so successful as a businessman that if I attempted to do music, I wouldn't be taken seriously. <laughs> yeah, that's wild. Especially yeah. from the kind of music I came from. You know, like when you talk about urban music, it's a certain kind of a topic that's glorified in it for it to actually work. Absolutely. And I couldn't talk about none of that shit no more. They like, you are not broke, you was not in the hood, you're not doing <laughs> none of that no more. Like, you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. So then I had to find just more celebratory songs. That's why I went into dance music and started doing shit completely away from the audience that I was used to. And then that's when it clicked and I said, you know what? Let me focus on Africa since I'm already out here doing major businesses. And that's when we started developing the whole Afrobeat scene. Yep. And that became now a wave. Massive wave. You know what I mean? Yeah. So now it's like, okay, cool. I can get back into the music business only because it's a whole new generation that didn't grow up to me. They grew up, their parents did, but they didn't. So now I can reintroduce myself again. And so, by the way, thank God. Yo, my man Akon has been performing live lately. So if you want a chance to catch him and some of your other favorite acts, you know SeatGeek got you covered with over 28 million downloads. SeatGeek is the number one rated ticketing app. There are more than 70,000 events every single day on SeatGeek, including concerts, sports, festivals, and more. Even KSI and My Fight will be available on SeatGeek. They put all the tickets across the web in one place to make sure you're getting a good deal. Each ticket is graded to make sure you're getting a good deal. Look for the green dots. Green means good. Red means bad. Every ticket is backed by their buy guarantee. 
And SeatGeek is the only site that lets you return your tickets ahead of the event with swaps. And I came through for you guys. Use my code Logan for $20 off tickets at SeatGeek. That is $20 off your first purchase with the promo code Logan. Make sure you click the link in the description to download the app. Shout out SeatGeek. Back to the show. News coming out of the, the hip hop space in June reports no hip hop singular album has topped the Hot 100 or Billboard 200 in 2023. The longest stretch since 1993 is hip hop dead, right. dying. No, that's crazy. Bro, like, think about that. Yeah, that's crazy. No hip hop track topped. That's crazy. Like, that's crazy. What is that? What do you think about that? Oh, that's that. That's, Why? That's music to my ears. Because when we come back, we definitely go. <laughs> that tells me the game is it's too easy. Like, it's too easy to take it back over. Like, so, it's too easy. So are you working right now? Are you in the yeah, studio? Yeah, I'm dropping an album in December. No way. Yeah. What's it called? Yo, bro, it's crazy. Yo, that's it's cool. It's called Iconic. Iconic. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing any any features? Anything you want to spill? Not yet. Not yet. I'm going to get closer to the release. release I kind of want to not tell nobody until they just get the album. Yeah. Like, I kind of feel like that's going to be a draw. Because I'm like the collabo king to the point where... I don't even know if I want to put features on the album, but then I'm like, I kind of want to rock with a lot of these little young niggas. Yeah, well, that's I, what I think it's cool. I think it'll you know what I mean? culture in a cool yeah, way. Yeah, I have to. Yeah, like, I have to. But that's what I want to ask you, like, and going back to the point I just made, like, who are you even rocking with? Like, like, who would you want on the album? Would you have Uzi on? Would you have Cardi on? Like, that's the thing. Like, who, I, I, who, do you, who do you listen to? Who I, are you fucking with? That, that's, what, that's what makes it interesting. Nobody. <laughs> no, no, no. I actually do. I actually rock with a few of them. Yeah, yeah. But I, that's 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 kind of what I want to keep locked until the album drops. Because I, I don't even want people to expect it. Because I'm, I'm telling you right now, the people that I do plan to collab with, people will never see it coming. Right. But like, I never a, see it I coming. I have a question, and don't take this the wrong way. Not at all. What if it doesn't hit the same? Is that a concern nah, of yours? not at all. No. Nah, Just uh, Bro, overarching compared to confidence. what's out now? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I yeah. promise you. This is one of the reasons why I really want to come back. Because yeah. I can't even listen to the radio and be happy. Like, like this, come on. I'm disappointed. Well, that's what, what I'm doing? asking you. I'm trying to get you to say yeah, some shit yeah. right now, bro. I need, I need like Breakfast Club to be picking this shit up and but that's running with it. You let, know what I'm saying? Listen, listen Charlemagne. In the, last, in the last, I would say two years, everything I said just fucking went stupid. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And it would be so, like, it was like to the point where I'm like, I need to shut the fuck up. <laughs> Join the club, dude. Right. <laughs> Join the club. Bro. I'm done talking. Yeah. <laughs> this podcast right. was the biggest mistake of my life. <laughs> I'm fucking headline whore, man. <laughs> it's good because it shows, okay, my word is still relevant. But in a way, what I realized that every time something was misconstrued, it fucked up the money. Especially because you're doing business others, now. Right. Yep. You know what I mean? Like, I'm like, dude, I almost, I almost, I almost literally lost out on a billion dollar investment for Akon City because of some shit I just thought I knew about that I had no idea happened the <laughs> night before on a Kanye remark. I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah. Like, dude, I'm not about to lose a billion dollars over, <laughs> oh, you know, to, like over no fucking opinion. Like, are you serious? Yeah. Yo, it's funny. The more successful you get in the business side of things, you'd have to be so much ca more yeah. careful of what you say. And it's, it's hard because that's you. You're just you want to be this, yourself. This, well, this is where we come that's, from. This, and it, it's, uh, to stuff. us, it's all entertainment, right? Yeah, of course. To them, it's like it's, the it's like the Bible. Well, so is there a point where y you would feel comfortable in saying, "Okay, I've made X amount of dollars. I can reinvest. I can do X, Y, and Z to continue, you know, living the lifestyle that I live while also being myself." Right. Like, is there a Ooh. such thing as making too much money and having to become too brand safe and having to lose your identity in the pursuit of, you know, say you create a massive, you know, hydration beverage, right? right. And you have to start to play into it. And but see, all that depends on what your ultimate aim and goal is. <laughs> Depending on your ultimate aim yeah, and goal, yeah. all that matters. <laughs> yeah, right, right. But if your goal, like my goal is, to, my goal is to develop and rebuild Africa. Impact, That's, impact. Period. Africa is my main Amazing. goal, right? Yeah. But what I'm realizing is that Africa is attached to so many foreign countries and so many agendas that it doesn't even deal with more uh, 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 um, corporate, but it's more political too. So it doesn't even impact me as much politically, I mean, corporately as it does politically. And to move a country that's undeveloped politically has to be solid. You the, understand what I'm saying? The, the opportunity in, see, people don't even know this. Like you, you got all these like uh, uh, talking heads and people that want to talk about, this is where the, the, the big dogs are moving their money. They're moving their right. money here, there. And lately it's been all this conversation about the Arab states, right. Dubai, you Middle know, East, exactly. Saudi ETC. Mm. But I've been going to conferences 
you know, 10, 15 years ago where the big dogs were already talking about sub-Saharan Africa right. being the biggest opportunity on the planet because of its lack of development, infrastructure, Absolutely. so on and so forth. Yeah. And so clearly you are tapped in enough and probably by way of obviously by heritage and, and, and it, you know, being something that means a lot to you. Mm -hmm. But like you, you discovered that that's where the fucking real opportunity is. Well, for me, it started with philanthropy. And then through philanthropy, I realized, God damn, this is a business. Yeah. Like, this is no, like a trillion dollar business. It's not even, it's nothing to play with. That's how serious the business is. Because it started with me just, you know, donating solar, you know, like kits to villages. Then I realized, wait a minute, I can just take the government contract and just supply energy to the whole country. Yep. Oh, you want some big boy shit. It, as, a hustler, <laughs> as a hustler, you think like that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then I was like, but it's, it's a bigger impact because with that, now that they have energy and they have the, the units within their homes, I can also, you know, they can pay their cable bill through it. They can pay their electric bill, mm. their water bill, and all this. Mm. So now you become a utility. But you also become <clears throat> someone with a massive responsibility to right. a massive group of people that that's mean a lot to you. <laughs> that's where it gets tricky. And I, and I guess the now question- Everything you say, don't just say it. You, now it's like, I represent the whole continent at this point. It's <laughs> yeah, not, yeah, yeah. I can't even say things that I naturally would have said before. Even the songs that I love to sing, I done wrote so many records that I was like, oh, this is gonna be crazy. But then now I was like, it's impossible to release a record like this. Oh man. But I mean, also you, you, know? you, you gotta <clears throat> keep, you actually have to keep that power running you actually have to keep those like do you right. ever miss the days where you could just get up and say smack that get on the floor <laughs> well, smack that those you know what i'm saying, saying? Like, i can still do because that was pre oh, oh uh, you could do the old pre ruler yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah so yeah. now i can i can do those songs but i gotta write them for other artists to sing it and then feature on it because it's not literally my record right. anymore so i can like that's the front that's the front yeah yeah, that's yeah. The, that's i like that <laughs> i like that but you've been successful there too Right, man. I mean, what you you were partially responsible for the takeoff of Lady Gaga. Yeah, that just, was a, you, that was you, a you co wrote Just Dance with her. The whole album, dog. Yeah, we produced and wrote that whole album. How does that happen? Did you write for her, or did were you writing songs no, that you no, were that hits? one was with because she's also an amazing song. Yeah, 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 like she's a beast. That for girl, sure. she's a three sixty. She's incredible. Just diamond. However you look at it, she was a star. I I saw a clip of Lady Gaga where she was asked about, I don't know, just her eccentric ways as an up and coming female artist. Right. And she, she sassed this guy asking her the question. She's like, if I was a man, you'd call me a rock star. But since I'm a woman, you're here asking me these questions or whatever. And like, she's witty she, too. She, no, she embodies <laughs> a rock star. And she Period. truly is. No, so, without a doubt. So you wrote that with her and wrote the album with her and then what, she right. popped off? She just popped off. Yeah. But we kind of knew it anyway, like. Oh, really? Like, she's the kind of person when she walked in the room, you just knew this was different. Like, my first experience with her, she was, she came to the studio with gold leotards. She, yeah, yeah. she looked like the 80s in the yeah. late 2000s. Yeah, like, yeah. and you're like, where did they do that at? Yeah. Like, <laughs> so I already knew this was special. The question is, okay, how do we make music that fits her personality? Because mm -hmm. at that time, the kind of music she was doing was more like jazz. That was always her passion. But I thought that's where they missed it every time. Cause it's like, you can't mix that look with jazz. It mm -hmm. doesn't work. And I didn't understand how nobody saw that, right? So we got in the studio, I was like, yo, what do you want to do? Like literally, like, what do you want to do? You know? And she described herself. And I was like, this is it. And at that time, I had just literally got contact with a DJ named David Guetta at that time. No was way. He's <laughs> been on our show. His... We've had him on. <laughs> right, yeah. right. And I said, this could, he could be the tool to break this chick. Like, cause it's like, at that time, house was still 80s at that point. Yeah. Yeah. But in Europe is vibrant. In America, nobody cared. Like, unless you was at a, you know, a gay club or you was in the Zanzibar in yeah. New Jersey. It's certain scenes that, that embodied house music, but she was more 80s disco. So how do you combine the two with culture? Mm. That was the question. So Just Dance became that, Okay, this now that we got this first record, every record need to fly like this, and we was we was only running from there. You st you still eating? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, still man, eating. Still how, eating. how much money do you think you made with this? A guy? lot. <laughs> <laughs> no, she's she, she's big, bro. Because you because you had, she, a, you had a share, right? And you sold it relatively yeah. early on, right? Hey, I, no, not really, not early after the third album. So the perfect timing <laughs> at at the peak. <laughs> so but, I. It, it, but that 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 that. <laughs> It was only because I saw the opportunity and I felt like 
my instincts told me, okay, this is the, the, the highest it's gonna get musically. Let me exit now and use this money to start my investments in Africa. Yeah. You know, because I was Re always thinking Africa. Yeah. I was always thinking and reinvestment. The worst part about the music industry is that you watched what scared me was I was watching a lot of people that I looked up to, like hurting. And I'm like, bro, like how do you how do you make two hundred million dollars and you're broke? Like, how is that possible? What is what is the answer to that question, by the way? Because I've always been curious about that. I found, I found people that make a lot of money quick, especially in the celebrity industry, right. also lose it just as quickly. How, well, how does that happen? <clears throat> Most of the time it's because they all trying to, like they're trying to, okay, put it this way. If you're trying to keep up with the Joneses, you're never gonna be able to survive. It's yeah. not sustainable. Yeah. Because it's almost like in music specifically, they have this theory you have to look like money to make money. Mm. Mm. When that's completely false, you're already a fucking star. You yeah. don't have to look like shit. You just yeah. have to be who you are. But the problem is, everybody has this this uh, idea of okay, if you don't look like money, you're not making money, right? Yeah. So you spend your money on all these cars and jewelry and houses for MTV cribs and kind of play this facade that you're successful. I think the idea of success is fortune, in actuality, right? Yeah. But the problem is. If you don't understand what success really is, which is freedom in my eyes, right? Mm, I think mm, that's one hundred percent. That's just me. Everybody's different what they believe success is, but freedom covers every sector. Long as you're free to do what you want, when you want to do, and how you want to do it, and that's spiritually, financially, whatever. To me, that's success. Because mm. when you when you can't do that, you're not successful. You're still working for the man, or working to become, or working. To, to survive or as work Con, to As Kanye would say, new, new slaves. You right. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, like, re, like in you're reality. You're still a slave to the system in yeah, that facts. case, right? So the moment you free from all that, to me, that's success. That's when you become successful. Even when you're, 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 like, you're free enough to dress like a bum and still be praised as a king. That's my Adam, goal. That's Adam, my goal. Adam Sandler. <laughs> Adam Sandler <laughs> yeah, is yeah, the yeah. epitome of that. Yeah. That man does not mm. dress for any event, for any occasion. He right. just wears what he wants. And that freedom you're talking about, a lot of, and you're asking about, a lot of people gave up trying to look a certain way or right. feel a certain way. And it's actually, as you know, contradictory to how, you know, you learned to grow up because right. you didn't want to be flashy. Quiet money was the only, the, the only way to live. Listen, you want to stay rich? Stay stingy. Yeah, facts. I'm the stingiest. Oh, no, not than yo, me, bro. Yo, no, no I promise you I got you beat. I promise <laughs> like you. If we wait, 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 what class does your wife fly? Well, I mean, she flies first. Okay, well, but he has girl, way his more. girls fly middle economy. She's, that girl's not my no, wife. Hold on, hold on. He has way more money than me. No, okay. but listen, listen. Any person in my caliber is not flying commercial. Fat, no, These dudes are flying jets all day. Fat. I attempted to own a jet. How'd that go? That shit lasted six months. <laughs> Wait, why? I sold that motherfucker so fast. No. Listen. Upkeep costs. What? Yeah, insane. That, you have no idea. Insane. What do you mean? This is my, this is my goal, eh, Con? Bro. Take that off your list. No, right come now. on. You shouldn't I jet. promise you. What take you it mean? off. No. no. Just Listen charter. To me. Charter. <laughs> Buy some hours and use it only when necessary. Oh. And most of the time, use it as a way of negotiation. <laughs> Let that be a part of your strategy to the money. But whatever you do, do not own a jet. What? Bro, owning a jet, you're spending at least two, three million dollars a year just on upkeep. You, so? spend, you spend more on the maintenance than the actual jet costs. So? What if you get to real fuck you? What if <laughs> what, you what, get what to about, like real if, fuck you money? Like yeah, disgusting. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> listen, like multitudes of bees, bro. D listen, this, this, this is the advice I give everybody. Okay. The money that you have now has to last you a lifetime. Facts. The moment you think about it. I don't see that it, happening. <laughs> the moment you think about it that way, you're going to be super, like, the way you, like, manage everything is going to be different. That's such a good point. Even if I only had $100,000 in my account, I look at it like, okay, this has to last me for the lifetime. It's a great, that's a great so advice. So smart. That's great. The moment and you think about it like that, you never going to be broke ever. Why, why didn't you tell MC Hammer that shit, bro? Honestly. Now, ooh. But he, I mean, you got to think in our generation, no one never taught us how to manage money. We didn't even know how money was. We didn't even understand the concept of money. That conversation is just now being had. Yeah, it's think, just like, yeah, time. financial literacy taxes. is just happening now. Dude. Oh, taxes, like, prime example, the right? funniest story. No, it's the, <laughs> dude, this shit is crazy. crazy. Like, like crazy. Like, I used to always compartmentalize every check. 
Like I already knew that if money comes in, I already put thirty percent away. I know for sure I'm gonna write. No, you exactly. <laughs> I would put thirty percent. No, LA. I put thirty percent away, right? Yeah. But even later, I realized that wasn't enough. Right. <laughs> that was later. Yeah. I <laughs> Before I got a business manager account and all that yeah. shit. They said, "Yeah, it's thirty. You're thirty-five percent." What them? I said, "Well, I'm gonna put thirty away." I'm but it's close. It's close. A lot. A lot of people, and this is another answer of how people end up going broke. Right. They they start spending on cars. They start spending on houses right. then all of a sudden two three years go by and somebody comes up to him and goes hey did you happen to have a team that looked at your tax implications for the past right. three years you owe 14 million dollars like, and how you have eight hundred thousand dollars in your, your bank account right. so you now have to give everything Thing up. over yeah it, well, the conversation isn't had until you're an adult dude i was 18 years old i was doing vine short yeah. form comedy online yeah. i got paid my first two thousand dollars for doing a brand deal I was stoked. I'm an 18 year old. I just made two thousand dollars for making a six second video. This is amazing. Right. Call my mom. I'm like, Mom, I made two grand. <laughs> Whatever. And my 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 friends come over. I'm bragging to him. And he goes, Man, it sucks. You're gonna have to give thirty percent to the government. And I You're said, like, what? I said, What are you what? talking about? <laughs> the government is my money. I made this money. Thank you. He goes, Are you fucking idiot? Like, oh, you have to pay taxes. I go, Tax. My mom pays taxes. I don't. <laughs> That's not like a parent thing, no. Right. And I, at 18 years old, I'm I'm stunned that this is a thing no one taught me in school my parents didn't teach me none of my friends knew and i was i was floored that this was not a conversation i think people are being more open with their finances now so they're being uh, uh, I'd, I'd hope smarter right. about it because they because people know you see it on tiktok well you, i mean the tiktok is you know basically people's uh, teachers you know that's the <laughs> most painful thing to ever have to endure it but it does it still sting especially you especially when you what hell yeah I, I'll, I'll always remember the first time that when it finally hit seven figures. I, I, I cried. I actually cried. I had actual tears. No, I, it's your actual, tax return, you paid seven figures in mm -hmm. taxes? Past three, past three plus Shut years. Up. Good yeah, for yep. you. It's past no three joke. plus years. No, listen. It's, it's, it's a long it's way from doing crack. Painful. <laughs> I used to smoke crack. Acon. It's so painful. I really did for a long time. It's more time. painful for you then. <laughs> way, <laughs> way more painful, bro. Way more painful. Yo, you don't have any keys you can get with that about it. <laughs> Talk about reinvestment. Holy <laughs> shit, bro. What? You'd be going crazy in New Haven. Can you imagine, <laughs> though, giving that much money away for absolutely doing nothing? Yeah, it's terrible. What's, you know what's terrible about it? There's is still potholes. They're not you, fixing You don't the know problems. where the money's going. <laughs> you don't know what it's, where's the money going? And, 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 and is it warranted? Do I have a decision in this? Technically, yeah. That's what, that's what we vote for. Right. You know, you know but um, you don't have the final say. At all, and that that always that always was uh, nah, that that just just a tough pill to swallow. For it's me. the hardest. Yeah, that's why I don't even want to see it. Like, Are you focusing on education all, at all? Because kind of speaking on that, I think I think growing up, there's a portion of life that wasn't covered that I found out about as an adult that right. I wish I had known earlier. Mm -hmm. And when I personally make the jump into philanthropy, when I start climbing my second mountain, I'm gonna attack education. Right. Is that on your list at all? That was the second on my list. Mm. Energy first, education second. Mm. And then we got energy and energy and water goes hand in hand and the education and healthcare go hand in hand. So in Akon City, we have the, the, um, the education district and then we also have the medical district. So each district we have schools like we've, we've signed I, um, <clears throat> LOIs with Berkeley, um, uh, Stanford, MIT and Yale, wow. right? So we're gonna do like video conferencing. So they're gonna, we're gonna like, each one of them will have their own building where we have students instead of, most of them have issues with, you know, uh, uh, visas going back and inside the US. So instead of African kids having to fly, go through that whole process to get all the way over there, they can just, you know, apply to school there and do video conferences at the same time that the classes are being held in wherever state is happening. Sure. Can we you know? can we <clears throat> step back a, a second and, yeah. and talk about Econ City? Because I don't think we've given any <clears throat> kind of real context as to, as to what you're actually doing right. there from a, from a holistic standpoint. Right, so Econ City is really just the beginning of the future of what Africa development should and I would like for it to look like, right? Everybody has their own process of what they see the future of Africa to be, but I've seen how Africa's been taken advantage of for so long, especially when you come to natural resources and none of it goes back to rebuilding Africa itself. So what I've been doing is trying to get as many entrepreneurs as possible to invest, which is still a like pulling teeth because the World Bank and, you know, Exim Banks and all the financial institutions globally don't see the advantage. Well, they know the advantage, but from what they already control, 
they don't see the advantages of developing Africa the way it is because development takes away a lot of the access they have to the resources, right? <clears throat> so there's always been a, a big pull and a big resistance for Africa to, to develop for the future. And I realized that firsthand when I was moving forward with the project because I was getting so much pushback from press, government, officials, all kind of stuff like all, it was like, wow, I didn't think it ever happened. But my dream as when I first came to America, I was coming from a village where there was like literally horse carriage, horse and carriages. Like I had never seen a taxi before. I came to New York City. Oh, let me tell you the story leaving the village. This is crazy. So we take the horse to the city, which is Dakar. Jump out of, Dak jump out of the horse and get into a car. Mind you, I'm seven years old. I have n I've never been in a car before. So it was like the fastest thing I ever seen in my life. <laughs> like, can you imagine coming yeah. from horses to a car? Yeah, like, yeah. So I got this, I'm holding on to the seatbelt, right? Then I'm riding into the airport. So as we get into the airport, I look out the window and I see these big old metal birds. Yeah. I thought they were birds because as a kid in the village, we used to always see these birds flying, but they never like, they just go straight. And I was like, that looks like the bird. So now we're going from that to the tarmac to go walk inside the bird. I started crying because I'm like, I'm not going inside the bird. I'm not going inside the bird. And I'm speaking well of my natural language, right? And they, my, like, my mom literally had to force me inside the bird. So I get in the bird and I realize, okay, there's seats in there. And I'm like, wait a minute, what is going on? <laughs> this is the culture, this is the culture shock, right? And I'm like, what the hell? So now I'm sitting down and they put this, the seatbelt on me. Of course, I'm holding up the seatbelt. I'm trying to hurry up and fall asleep before it takes off because I know this thing is going to start moving at any minute. So it starts taking off. I start screaming. Ah! Then it literally goes into the air. And I'm sitting here and I'm sitting, I'm seeing the world get smaller and smaller and I'm realizing I'm in the sky. So now I'm getting these flashbacks of when I was literally playing soccer, seeing this thing flying over me. Now I'm in the thing flying over my friends, right? It's, it was so traumatic that I fainted. <laughs> He's out. He's I was out. out. <clears throat> That's how I felt about my taxes. Right, so the whole time I fainted, my mom thinking I'm asleep. <laughs> She's, She's like, like, let him sleep. Hey, that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> All I remember is that we get to New York City and my mom is like slapping me. And then, you know, and I wake up and I'm like, where am I? Like, I look out the window and I remember I'm in the bird. As I'm seeing, I'm seeing these like these huge structures, like buildings. It was almost like the Jetsons to an extent. Yeah, like yeah. it, I had never seen anything like this. But I was so like, 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 just, I don't even have words to describe it, but so fascinated. I'm looking like, wow, and then we finally land. At this point now, I'm kind of adjusting to what's happening. We get into the airport, we get out, we see all these blue, I mean, yellow tabs, cabs and everything. We get to the hotel and I'm sitting here in the high rise and I'm overlooking the city and I'm like, wow, this is like, I thought I was in heaven. I thought I died. <laughs> I literally thought I died and went to heaven. Just imagine a kid barefooted playing soccer in the sand, never seen no major buildings past two stories, right? N never seen a car before, never seen civilization like that. Yeah. And seeing that like this. Contrast, the insane. contrast. Just imagine what that shock culturally would do to anybody. And in my mind, I'm like, wow. Like, I just, I didn't know I was, I didn't, I didn't think it was real. It took a few days for it to all kick in. It was that moment that I said to myself, if my friends could ever see this, one day something like this is hopefully gonna happen in Africa. Like this is my mindset. Uh. That never, that like it never, never went away. So as I started getting more successful, I start traveling. I remember being in Dubai at like around year 2000. There was only one building there, one building. Yep. And they was building infrastructure. And in 10 years, I seen that place grow to become a full blown city. Yep. So by 2010, 2012, I said, I got to build the city. <laughs> I, I don't gotta, know how I'm going to do it. Build the city. <laughs> I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I got to fucking do it. Yeah. I'm doing it, especially. Then that, that childhood memory always came back. But then as I got more successful, I started hanging around billionaires and 
people that like manages trillion dollars that of, can make it happen right. that can actually make it happen exactly yeah. i said okay i get it now yeah i'm gonna find a way to pull all this shit together so cool and that's and that from 2012 i've been on it and just three months ago we just finalized everything and we're now building the welcome center to the city as we speak <laughs> wow bro that's crazy yep. congratulations that's such a beautiful like full circle story well his ethos yeah. is 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 rooted so deeply in who he is yeah. right yeah and it's so cool to have experienced that because like man it's it's almost like imagine imagine in the olden days if you stumbled upon like the roman coliseum and you had never right. seen a structure like that before or, or stumbled upon the pyramids and you're like how how was this built right. you know i i, I I, I want to make this happen for people who were like me. Right. And it's cool. Man. It, like, yeah, it, it changes your motivation for sure. Has there been any, uh, obviously you've had people to help you and people mm -hmm. to help, you know, move the project along. Has there been any pushback? Have you had it in Africa itself? Is oh, yeah. Is there any desire for continued traditionality in Africa? 100%. People that want to keep things the same. Absolutely. There's always going to be people like that. I think with me specifically, I was more shocked because when I introduced the project, I got praises and support from well, at least I thought I was being supported by everybody, especially the government side. And then as close as I, the closer I got to making it materialize, the more pushback I started getting from the people I thought was supporting, you know? And it was like, I did not realize how many agendas was being affected, but I'm, in my mind, I'm like, if the place is developed, you actually make more money than when there's nothing there. People get scared, bro. People it doesn't, get people. Like, if this is about money, you actually make more money when you have a development organization sure. and a system that actually works. It's cha it change. Change is scary. Yeah. Change is really you know? scary, you know? Like, people want to be comfortable. <clears throat> they, they do with what they know. And uh, I think with the amount of change that's currently happening, right, where this is the technological revolution. Right, right. Are you up to date and are you paying attention to the stuff that's happening actually right now that I think will be... The about ultimate the, the pivot. currency, the currency changes and all uh, that? Not so much currency changes. I'm talking about AI specifically. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's that's part of the, the scariest thing in the world. <laughs> to everybody. Have yeah, you been right? victimized yet by it? I've already invested in AI companies. <laughs> oh, you're going have, have you? I'm going full that's speed. Not, not, like, I sure. love that kind you of shit. You should, you should. No, it's, you It's the future. No, I, it is the future. I, I did invest in a couple, in a couple but... Yeah, uh, like, know, it's the future without a doubt. Like, you got to know that this is the future. Now, yeah, it is scary because people are always thinking about what's the worst thing that can happen. I'm thinking about what's the best thing that can happen. Yep. So when I think when I when I get in those kind of situations, I always think about the good things that it can actually do versus how it can be used for criminal activities I'm, or. I'm fraud gonna be honest. Whatever, we need you know? to think about the bad shit on this one. No, too. Every, that's, bro, but, anything bro, you do, you got to think about the bad. This but one's this one's crazy. No, but, but did you? I gotta ask you if you heard the story. Mm -hmm. I gotta ask you if you heard the story. The, the the military, mm -hmm. obviously, and by the way, this is stories that are coming out now. So, you know, they've already been working with AI right. for 30 Forever. plus years. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's just coming out now. Right. So the military has been working with this drone system that is going to AI take out land to air rockets. So right. it's it's being trained to take out those rockets. But there's a there's a commander on the ground that has communication with the device and with the AI that says, Oh, um, unfortunately, we have c possible collateral damage in that area, so we're going to ask you to avoid that target. Right. And the AI, who's trained as its only goal to destroy that target, says, okay, let me, let me reroute and re-puzzle this so that I can accomplish my goal and, re and, and quickly reroutes to take out the commander. So that it can go and take out the initial target. What are you which talking is, about? That is what it did. What? <laughs> Talk, what? That's what it did. No. It, it, this is a whole, you could read all about it, dude. The, the, the AI. the commander was in its the, way. The commander was in its way. Shut the of up. accomplishing its primary yeah, goal, which was to take. So, the, so, no. so we, those same conferences where they were talking about Sub-Saharan Africa, right. some real, honestly, Illuminati type shit, <laughs> right? Like this is 10 years ago. They were talking about the dangers of AI and more importantly, SI mm -hmm. as the final boss of SI? the super intelligence, right, as yeah. the final boss Ooh. of what we're facing as humans. Super intelligence, when laying its foundation, will look at human civilization as a anthill and right. will say, I'm laying this foundation. Unfortunately, these pesky humans are in our way and I'm going to continue laying my foundation. Right. That has to scare so, you. That has to scare you. What? Okay, this is the thing. <laughs> Has anybody ever thought to think or even imagine or realize that it's us who's building this? Yeah, they're thinking about it. And yeah, it's us trying to who's make rules. programming this. Yeah, yeah. 
And it's like, no machine can do anything without us programming it to do so. But we're programming a machine that can learn. That's the problem. No, okay, <laughs> which is fine, but we can control what they learn. Because, see, this is the thing, right? There's a lot of people that have, the biggest problem America has, or the West, is the brain. There's so much mental disease. So much. And mental, like, illness, illness going on that we never took the time to even focus on that. Half of these, you know, these mass shootings are mentally ill people. Mm. Like how, did, how, how does that not be the president focus and priority? For everything. For everything. For everything. Yeah. You're, you're so right. Because guess what? As long as that exists, AI is the most scariest thing and will be the most dangerous thing on the planet for our future. Because it's gonna be people that's mentally fucked up that's dealing with this, these machines. Like half the, like think about it. Majority of programmers, that's in Silicon Valley, are all mentally ill. Yeah. What? These motherfuckers what are, are you, no, because, no, because Wait, what? Statistically, <laughs> statistically like, he's probably right. They're non-social, they're very, they're <laughs> introverts. Like, they all are weird because mentally they're not all the way there. Like, God don't give you everything. He'll give you intelligence, but then you have mental illness. Like, so you, you think about most of the people that's like, uh, uh, what's 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 that word they bro, call? Bro, cra crazy genius, bro. Yeah, you you, know you one or the other. Like, yeah, it's very well, hold, rare. Hold on, you get it all together. No, <laughs> seriously, yeah. so, I'm sure there's some like that because they they're so intelligent. They don't think normal. Like yeah, they don't think sure. like an ad because they don't go through the normal, you know, procedures, for behaviors, sure. and things that actually like shit that we go for through. For sure, yeah. they're locked in a room every day, and that intelligence takes them to a world that we even won't ever understand, yeah. and vice versa, right? But sometimes it leads to. I won't, you know what, let me not even say mental illness, but sometimes it leads to a point of misunderstanding so far that we may think they're crazy. Mm. But they're not. Certainly. They just aren't, be, they just more awoke than we are from a level of intelligence. Mm. Nah, sometimes they're crazy. Some, every once in a for while sure. they're fucking for sure. crazy. Some, bro, yeah, but, no, no, but that's where I'm going. <laughs> but some of them are actually really crazy. Yeah. But who's there monitoring that sickness? Well, who defines, well, he, or who he, defines crazy. crazy? It could be and, someone crazy defining crazy. Well, the issue is, <laughs> what we think no, we're talking about. No, no, no. <laughs> right. He's right, though. The landscape of crazy has shifted, honestly, especially over the past like four to five years. I, I, dude, my whole life, I always thought everybody around me and all the people I fucked with and family and friends, everybody had a good grasp on what. Now you see some of the shit people are talking about these right. days, and that is being looked at as like a potential normality. Or right. A, and, and honestly, some of it ain't crazy. Like, like you said, why, why is the government not focused their number one resource on mental illness? And, and five years ago, I would have said that people were crazy for saying it's because they're making money off of it. Right. But now it's obvious. it don't seem so crazy no more. You know right. what I'm saying? So, so, so the, not only are how crazy people are defined getting crazy, but the whole landscape of crazy is crazy and it's all crazy, bro. It's all crazy. You know what I'm saying? But like, even, even AI, right? And I know a lot of the, the biggest um, fear comes from how will it be used as weapons at war, things they say. But as much as they're creating AI to be weapons to destroy, they can also create that same concept and you know, intelligence to be something that de like deletes or even takes a reason for, not, for war not to even for happen. For sure, Neuralink. Literally, Neuralink. like believe solve me. disease. Yeah, because war is just a decision. We're fighting or we're not. It's, it's that simple. It's so silly if you think about it's it. It's all ego. It's so silly if you think about war, like just humans, us, Why? our fellow man right. and women, women just fighting for what? <laughs> for what? Why we just talk about this? <laughs> yeah, like you know, I mean, I mean, listen, from how I was raised, there's no situation or problem that can't be solved without a conversation. Every situation can be solved with a conversation. Who, in, who, your, in, your, in your area of Africa, but obviously in many areas of Africa, that's not the case, right? Like, like but even there, it can be because they're being, okay, the areas where there's war, if you Still look today, if, till this day, yeah. it's vast resources that's Di being farmed. Mm. Most Now it's about cobalt yep. and, and so like, like uh, greed. Right. It's all capital. Like it's all yeah. about money, yep. yeah. right? They don't even know why they're fighting. They're fighting because of what they were told. Yeah. Oh, this village, they're the ones that killed your brother. Yeah. Da, 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 da. Here's the weapon. Get back at them. What like gang shit. Literally. Gang shit. Literally. Yeah. You're yeah. a person in the limelight. You've been in the limelight for a while. You've gotten to see the good parts of humanity. You've also got to see the bad parts of humanity. And I'm sure at some times um, the missile of humanity has been aimed at you. 
Right. And that probably didn't feel too good. Uh, as a person who definitely has probably been like attacked, uh, scrutinized, ABC, what, what, is there any part of you that is reluctant to help out humanity? Like, why does, no, seriously, I mean, fuck you know, you know, people, you know, people, are, people are shitty, dude. Borderline statement, people are shitty. That's a great question, because honestly, and why, why, why use I your energy and your brain power to like, to, to, to help a species that is, I mean, we're fucking doomed, bro. I'll be honest with you, we're doomed. <laughs> we can't do that. No, we're we doomed. Can't do that. Nah, we're doomed, bro. We can't do that. We gotta manifest positivity for our people. Yeah, bro. but for how long? I, I, but for how long? Ever, you until, think until the last nuke drops, bro? We gotta talk positive. Why? Bro. Because that's, what's the difference because, between our species surviving 100 because, years and 150 years? Not nah, because that's the real poison. That negativity is the real poison. That's what's causing the mental illness. Is what? that what? is that negativity? What? What? I'm telling you, bro. Whoa. We gotta talk. We gotta get back to a point where we're in this together, where we love each other. And by the way, that was never really the case, but we gotta get there. We gotta love each no, other, I, I, bro. This, this is the thing, right? The problem that we're missing is spirituality. People don't forgot about that. Like, no one grows up literally being fearful of God anymore. So they, some people don't even know it exists, right? They don't, they, they wanna believe it, but to them, in their minds, there's no signs physically that tells them that religion or spirituality is real. Because now it's about seeing, tasting, feeling, and- The five senses. Right, yep. right. Yeah. But I grew up differently. And to answer your question before I go into the spiritual side is that I don't honestly feel bad. And I don't feel like, you know, the work that I've done is gonna be done in vain because I always believe that no matter what the situation is, you will always be rewarded for doing the right thing. Absolutely. Even if you don't know if it's how it's coming. Karma, karmatic. Right. Yep. The reward is there. Yeah. How, you'll never know, but just do it, not expecting anything back in return. Yeah, and you'll be good. Life feel great. Life key right there. Yeah, That's the key. give without Absolutely. expectation. Absolutely. Energy. That's the key. Energy. Yep. You know. So getting back to the spiritual side of it, though, which is interesting, is that this generation don't even know what that is. It's like you couldn't if you, if you tried to explain it to them, they'd think you're preaching to them. They don't really believe you because there's never been or have been never been put in a position where spirituality was relevant enough for them to believe enough to follow through with what we were taught growing up. Like our parents instilled it in us and they represented it. So if I woke up, you know, as a Muslim, I had to go to pray every Friday with my pops. It happened. It was not a question. You had to go do it. Today you have a choice. You know, like my wife, she's Christian. I never forced her to convert. Because in the way I was taught in Africa, I mean, Islam is an extension of Christianity. We Absolutely. believe everything. Yeah. We, we actually believe all the same thing. We From just don't believe Testament. in the Holy Ghost. Yeah. That's the only thing. But everything else is all the same. Same commandments, same stories. Jesus is a prophet. We, we all believe the same, right? The only problem was that you have people that, okay, when you go into paganism and, you know, worshiping statues and everything else, we just don't believe that there's no one or anything higher than the most high, which is God. And no man should ever be looked at as God himself. We are all messengers of God. We're all messiahs to our own extent. And so that's the conflict with that's Jesus. That's the conflict with Jesus. We right. don't believe that Jesus was God in man's flesh. Yep. We, yep. Don't. We, right. don't. we just believe that he was a messenger of God as the messiah. Yep. So we're not that far off. Right. You follow? <clears throat> so it, it, it becomes a situation where there's so many different religions now but when you think about it, we're all going to the same place. We're all literally worshiping the same, you know, God. We just translation by language or by anything. We just call them something different. But when you really look at religion, we all have the same commandments. We all have the same stories. It might be told by a different person or a different name attached to that story, but the story don't change. Maybe the characters may change from a standpoint of the name they call them. But in actuality, you know, my grandfather told me something that was super, super important that always stuck with me. He said, look at the way God put us. He already knew that we all would be, you know, designed differently. We all would have different cultures. We all would speak different languages. We all would be born in different places. But at the end of the day, he, all, he made sure that no matter what circumstance or area or religion that you follow, that there was always the one God at the top of the ladder. Now, this is religion, and always never forget this. Look at it like a navigation, right? We all going to the same place, but there's different directions to get there. So 
I can't look at you and say, okay, because you're Jewish that, okay, you're not spiritually sown or you're not going to heaven or whatever place that is or because you're Buddhist or because of whatever. At the end of the day, we all have this one thing that we all follow that there's a most high, right? There's a God that we, you know, that we give praises to and he's the reason why we want to become better for everyone else to better ourselves in the eyes of his. And I'll ask, even if it's yourself, even if you believe that I'm God, it's okay because in actuality, we are gods. We create life, we whatever. And if you want to be better for yourself and do the right thing so you can feel good about yourself, then so be it. But God is more of an energy, more of a spirit. It's to enlighten you to want to be better for yourself and everybody else that's attached to Absolutely. you. And I think that route is the piece that, that hasn't been taught. It's not about a specific religion and following an exact rule to the T because I know some people that changed their life over for the better and was better before they changed. I mean, after they changed than before they were. You can't tell me because a person becomes a new man, he's going to get literally punished for every past, knowing that he's repented for it and doing what everything in his power to change or, you know, show that he has remorse for those past actions. Every people are able to change like no absolutely and and i and obviously you know Christ, mm. christianity is an extremely forgiving and compassionate religion right and i and i i don't i don't i would never want to speak out of ignorance uh, about uh, the muslim religion because i don't understand it as well as i do christianity right. right but i will say this i i i agree with you in a lot of ways that lack of traditionality and and godlessness has pushed to a lot of the issues that it we're does. seeing in, in today's is. day and age i agree but i will also say that I think that there's starting to be a pushback. You're starting to see a pretty strong, even on social media, pushback from, um, you know, honestly, even people like like Tate and like people that are driving this more uh, youth direct directed narrative to get back to God. Right. Um. And and so you know you're you're seeing it. It's palpable. I think it I, definitely is. It's just time. I I mean, obviously, there's such beauty and value in spirituality and religion. It is. It, it, it's just perhaps maybe why some of it's being lost is, is, I mean, again, we're in the scientific revolution and a lot of the scientific developments and advancements and conversations that are being had now that were never had before where acts of God can now be explained by science right. and, and the amount of holes that can be poked in certain religions makes it harder for certain people to have that blind faith. Absolutely. If they don't have an experience themselves, if they're not having that daily conversation with whatever God they're worshiping, if they're not receiving the fruits of their labor it man life's hard life's no, hard is, and how is. much faith can you put into a thing right. that you know you're not sure and, of and now the, see that's the key the key is not really to put the faith in the thing like see growing up in africa we just saw things differently and then growing up from a rural standpoint you see it even more different right whenever i get to the point where i have to question myself if god exists i always go back to when i was young and i have these conversations with my grandpa because he was very influential in me being spiritual he said always think about life how did it start that tells you everything you need to know who created the sun mm. who created the stars and that tells you everything because we know man didn't create that mm. okay let's say an alien created that okay who created the alien mm. it, it, it goes, like the big bang thing is like it, the whole thing but like Right. It's who pushed the fucking button, bro? You're Period. telling me just from nothingness there was this. There was some, something. Something had to it, start went in somewhere. There was it, somethingness. Thank you. Is impossible, so bro. That's how did that somethingness possible. even be created? Right. Like whenever you in doubt, just think about that, and it'll bring you all the way back again. <laughs> yeah. Because you can't explain that. I, I think though a part of the reason why people may land on god or want to believe that something did start from nothing is because we want explanations our species wants answers that's why they call it's, it faith it's, that's it's why exactly they call it why faith, they call it faith dude it's hard to <laughs> that's not why. know why right. we're here and what we're doing that's kind it's of really, depressing it's really plato oh, i want an answer it's, it's <laughs> what are we doing here how did we get here but that's what i'm saying humans we're natural we're nosy creatures by nature yeah you yeah know? yeah we need to know like yeah. our brain is exactly it goes back to ai again the, in, it, the what brings what makes it uh, like um relevant is the fact that it wants to learn it needs to learn it has to learn mm. and we're that like we're we are that this is why we're creating machines and we're thinking okay it needs to teach itself <laughs> like <laughs> this is who we are we don't know how to take that away but that's also a part of our dna and our creation and what makes us the most you know dominant species on earth 
Yep. Because we, you know, we we actually have that, right? Yep. So we're like, you know how they say, okay, well, you're just a reflection of God. Clearly, he the same, like or she, like or it, or whatever yeah. it may be. It it puts everything in perspective to where it grows itself and it maintains itself. Like this is why we're so self-sustainable. Like look at the human species. Like how the fuck is my heart beating? Like. It's, How it's, am I breathing like and blinking without even realizing impossible. it's happening? It's impossible, right? It, How, and the but question we're here, is, we're doing it. You know, going back to faith again, how do you how do you answer that? You can't. I could try. Right, you can try, but the, <laughs> the answer won't be accurate. So it goes back to the things we can't explain are actually are real. We just can't explain it because we aren't built to. And and also like I can't think of anything more depressing and more inducing of mental illness than the idea <laughs> that spirituality or magic or love or any of those things that aren't logically explainable right. do not exist do not that, exist. that would that makes me and i've gotten there in my life many times many fucking times i've been on death's door down icu you know felony charges in court whatever the fuck where i'm like okay this is it and that feeling of just hard surface like lone despair void of, void yeah. of of that purpose, of that and, purpose and magic in life is is it would make me crazy right. yeah but you but, but there's also i think beauty in that if you can find it we're we're we're, we're impossible humans are impossible right. we're on this planet as far as we know we're the only intelligent species as far as we can see and we can't explain it we don't know what we're doing here and so there's Oh, a reason to be depressed about that, no, but also no, no. there's a reason to go. It, Damn, that's that's, that's, that's significant. Which way you go that's in, that's incredibly magical. cool. But, and and, and but I'm, also, I'm here, and this is a bonus. I'm gonna live the best life I can. Right. But it's also a matter of understanding, and more than anything, a, a principle of just, of just acceptance, right? I think the acceptance part is the part that we actually, you know, kind of put aside, and we don't take it as serious as everything else. Like, like we are like prime example. Drink problem. There's three worlds that we're living in. And I'm, I'm, I'm going back to Africa again, right? Three worlds that we're living in. Okay, we're living in reality where you can see it, smell it, taste it, feel it. You know it exists because you can, it's there, right? And then that's the reality. Then you have the sea, okay? It's water, but it's the half of the top and the bottom. The bottom is all water. Okay, it's a whole nother life form, just like we living right now. <laughs> you Underwater. See it, you can smell it, you can taste it, you can feel it. The only difference is we can't live in it. Right. And then you have the spiritual world. You can't see it, mm. can't smell it, mm. can't taste it, can't feel it. Sometimes. You get a little shocked. Depends but you know it exists. Yeah. You just can't understand or feel or know how to get to it. Mm. But you know it's there. I thought I'd gotten it from a couple of hits of crack back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> you might have gotten right. there. Mike would have been there. Mike's been right? there. Right? Right? It was, that's, it that's, was, that's, it was fake, That's bro. the world. That's the world that we, we, we know exists, but we can't live in it. We can't smell it. We can't taste it. Unless you do mushrooms. No, but but honestly, but when no, the first all, time, all jokes aside, yeah. You, you understand? So, yeah. but but that's the part that we don't calculate in everything else that we're doing. That's why I tell everyone that I, you know I speak with, whether it's mentees or whatever, never create your goals without aligning them with your spiritual goals. Mm -hmm. Because people, we make goals all day, but we don't align them with spiritual goals. So half the times when you don't make it, you don't even know why, because spiritually you wasn't even on the path or even doing the, all the right things for that goal to manifest properly. And the scarier thing, honestly, is not not making it and right. doing something that's not aligned with your purpose, but it's making it. Because imagine you do accomplish a goal that's not aligned with impact, purpose, spirituality, right. and you start to go further down a path that that's isn't what, there you for go. you. Right. You know what I'm saying? So the right. best thing that could happen with you is, you, is that shit don't work out. Because then all of a sudden you gotta go back to the drawing board and say, yo, what do I want to do with my life? Who do I want to help? What type of person do I want to be? What type of impact do I want to make for the, for, the, for the kids and for the people? Absolutely. Because I, I do believe that we all have a purpose, though. For sure. And I, and I believe that every road that we take takes us in the direction of fulfilling that purpose. So even if you go through that process of, like you said, fulfilling something that, you know, you go further down the rail than you expected and it's not working out the way you need it to, it's only because it's preparing you for the goal or purpose that you're wanting to go. Like, I don't believe in the word failure. I don't think that word exists. Sure. And I always believe that if you 
so-called failed in something is only because you got into it without having all the information first. Because once you got the information, success is enough. It's inevitable. Like you're going to win no matter what. But if you're walking into it and it doesn't work out the way you need it to go through, it's because you didn't have enough information, one. And two, whatever your purpose is, that process, you needed to go through it. So you, when you get to your next step, you'll have either the strength, the, 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 the motivation, or the information to get to your next step to fulfill whatever purpose it is in See, life. See, when I first heard, I see you whining and grinding, you right. up on that pole. Like, I never thought you were going to say all coming. the things that you just said. Didn't see like, this I didn't, th those two things, like, to me, <laughs> were like the sea and spirituality. Like, I was like, bro, he, there's no way he's got all these different sides, bro. Like, like that's crazy. Yeah, yeah. You're much, you're much deeper than your music. <laughs> no, Maybe good. there was another side to it. Maybe we weren't listening to it properly. You know what I'm saying? Maybe that was spiritual. Because I got in spiritual with a few strip it. clubs listening to that song, bro. I felt <laughs> real, real close to God at like, yeah. to, you know what I'm saying? At Keepers in Milford, Connecticut straight, or some straight. shit. <laughs> you, so you sound like a, a guy who's Who's, who's done a lot of stuff, a lot of successes, a lot of, I won't say it, but maybe failures at some point. <laughs> uh, uh, did you ever lose yourself? You know, you coming from the seven-year-old uh, village in Africa, flying on a plane for the first time, uh, I'm sure that has always grounded you and you always have something to be grateful for and look right. around and say, I, what has my life become? Right, but right. Did, did, did it ever get to a point where you weren't that person anymore? And maybe, maybe your values got skewed and your priorities changed because of your success. Yeah, I, I think the, the values and the skewed part came before the success. And that was when I finally got into the US and find, trying to fit in. I literally forgot about, didn't forget, but ignored all the values, the religious teachings, the spiritual behaviors. I just wanted to be accepted by the friends, yep. the peers. So I got into a lot of shit just on GP. Lock, locked up, baby. Yeah, and that's what ended me, that's, what, that's how I ended up getting locked up. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just trying to find ways to, like I, I, I would honestly do things that I ain't even thought I, I was even capable of doing, just to impress people. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I was doing things that I didn't think I had the courage to do just to impress my homies or yeah. so they don't think I was a punk. Like, And this is in, this is in Jersey. What were you in? Jersey. Tr in Trenton or like where were you yeah, in well, Newark? Well, no, well, Jersey was really where it it all went down. Yep. Jersey, this is why I represent Jersey. The what way year I do. is this? It, it was like in, early 2000, real early 2000. It was in the 90s. Oh, late 90s. Yeah. Mid 90s. I, I would just say 90s. Got it. Got it. <laughs> <That> was, <laughs> the whole 90s. Mid 90s. <laughs> 90s, was a, 90s was a problem. So you yeah. got into, so you got into, uh, it was what, boosting or stealing I, cars? Actually, right? I, I, actually, I, I kind of dibbled and dabbled in, the, in a little bit into everything. But then, that's when my, my instincts kind of caught and more of my business um, uh, savvy kind of kicked in because I was thinking about all the hustles that could be fruitful, right? But the ones with less risk. I always thought the drug dealing was the dumbest hustle in the world. Like, first of all, you're doing all this for a three to four thousand dollar profit. Like, yeah, that what was my, the that fuck? Was my game, it's so stupid. It was like, so yeah. dumb. It's, it's so dumb. It's like, risky, okay, yeah. first of all, if you're peddling on the street level. Like, are you gonna make maybe two, three dollars per bag, yeah. like profit? Like, yeah. it's, first of all, for all that risk, it ain't worth it. If if you gonna go anything, you gotta go big as a drug dealer to make it. Like you gotta <laughs> what do go, you consider it big? big? What do you consider big? I'm talking about a hundred keys or less. Wow. I mean, or more. Damn. Wow. Damn. That's the only way it makes sense. Wow. Because you're gonna yeah, get, but that's to you. No. But when you're when you're living in Bridgeport or Newark or wherever, then you rob then the a levels. drug dealer. You rob that motherfucker. <laughs> do not do that. No, please. no. Listen, do listen. Because it's the same risk. It's the same risk. Listen, let me explain something, right? <laughs> and yeah, kids, do not whatever you do, don't, don't try this. Don't even fuck at home with drugs, bro. Any, stay away from drugs yeah, as yeah, far as yeah. possible. We had no choice at that yeah. time. So what I'm saying is, if you're gonna go there, li just listen to the odds, right? As a drug dealer, dumbest hustle in the world. If you're not doing it on a bigger level, and don't you ain't gonna make it. Just stop. Just don't yeah, even think about drug dealing. Just that stop. Level. Just yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like winning the lottery, yeah, and even 100%. then you're gonna die. You're yeah. not gonna make them. You ain't gonna make it long to spend the money. So think about it. Okay. If you're lucky, you might get a key for like fifteen grand, but that's like the ultimate hookup. That's so cheap, bro. That's, that's the ultimate so cheap. ultimate hookup. It's like you're in the port. I, now for I'm, it. I'm I'm talking days when I was coming up. I yeah. don't know what the prices are today. I ain't been in the market forever. Th Thirty plus, bro. Right. Yeah. 15 was the price if you had the, the, 
a plug. If you didn't have a plug, 20. Because a plug is going to make us 5,000 on top. Yeah. You, if you get it off for 25, you would be lucky. But they're going to talk you down to about 23, 23, 5. So your profit is about $3,500 average. Now, with that 35, this is a whole key. If you get stopped or caught, you're doing 25 years. For just oh one. For one, for one key. For one. Yeah. One key. Don't mention the people that you rolling with that you may not just trust. That might rob you for that yeah. if you get caught slipping. Right? And you, you literally constantly watching your back. You got to find a place to stash it. And hope is safe enough because if you lose it, if you was fronted that, you got to come oh, up with a whole 20, yeah. whatever stacks to pay the person that fronted you that money. And if fast, you fast, fast. Right. Fast. At the time you're supposed to deliver the profit, you got to come with the money regardless. Or you, you just hope that he's a nice guy and give you a shot. Otherwise, he capping you. All that for $3,500. That doesn't check out. It's not worth it. <laughs> doesn't make sense. No. <laughs> now, if you get 100 keys... Okay, cool. That's thirty-five thousand. No, three hundred. No, three hundred fifty thousand. Three hundred fifty thousand yeah. dollars. Yeah, yeah. Is that worth the risk? Maybe. <laughs> 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 but it's better than thirty-five hundred. Yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah, At yeah. least with three hundred fifty thousand, you can buy your life back. Yeah, yeah. Anything past that, okay, I can say. In those days, it was worth the risk. But if you ain't doing it on that level, stay far away. But from that. It. But when you get to that level. There's such a difference in in the operation. I mean, you've got brokers, you've got you've got actual wire transfers, maybe. Well, you've it's, got it's a well, completely it's, it's different not, ball. Game. But it ain't no wires at this all cash. It, 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 yeah. You gotta have a stash house to, to you gotta find place. See, the hardest part when you get to a certain level is finding places to hide the money. The money's the biggest problem. Because it's all cash. That's the biggest problem that the until, cartels have. Until Bitcoin came about, yeah. it was only cash <laughs> transactions. That's it. Like this is why you see you know, these, these cartel guys, you know, they was like renting out cul-de-sacs in Miami, like five, six homes full of money. Just to put money? Just to put money in. You know, in. Pablo Escobar said he was losing $1 billion a year just to rats and insects. Yeah, just to $1 rats and insects. $1 billion no, just, a year is, in cash, This is bro. insects eating up the money. Yeah. Like eating it, literally eating it. The like, money's the money's the main thing. That's the main thing that the feds watch. That's the easiest way to actually track what's happening is right. to watch money because it's so big. It's, it's so big. It's so much weight and so much to move. In you know? trucks and stashes. And where no, you gonna put it? Right. It's, it's impossible. Like yeah. you just forget about it. It's the dumbest. But that ain't gonna stop no money. You go, you go back there, and everybody's still trapped. But it's the dream. It's yeah. the thought of one day I could be Pablo Escobar. But how much? <laughs> but how much? And this bring it back. How much of that was because of the music? When I, I remember when Reasonable Doubt dropped, mm -hmm. right? And I was like, dude, like Jay was the biggest crack star to rap star that you had I had ever seen, bro. Like this dude had flipped and got out of it, but all his music was about selling crack. You know what I'm saying? And that was everybody. That was Biggie. That was every, Listen, everything we grew up with said this is okay, whether it was Styles, whoever it was. Mm -hmm. This was what you could do. You could do this shit. And so I would drive right. around and I would listen to it. I would listen to Locked Up. Bro, I would listen to that song right. when I would pick up a finger, 10 grams of heroin. To me, that was big. Right. That was nothing, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I was 10, grams, 10 grams. I would go and I would bag up 350 bags and I would go and drive around in the fucking Nissan right. or the fucking Infinity and play Locked Up or I'll Still Kill. Those songs. Like, you were the soundtrack to my life, bro. <laughs> bro, that's crazy, dude. <laughs> And I didn't make any money, bro. <laughs> I still had to ask my grandmother for a place to stay. Yeah. Sort of God, but it, it goes back to the dream again. It's the dream of one day being that big time guy, yeah. right? Finding a plug from Mexico or Colombia or Venezuela or wherever, right? Even back in, in Asia where they had the heroin lock, you know, connects yeah. whatever. But you it's, you got to once you find the you become the plug. Now it's like okay, you get the territory and you supply all the little peddlers out there, and just hope you can hold on to it long enough to get out of it. Most people never make it out, right? Yeah, because you, the money coming in so fast and so quick that you look at it like, oh, I'm good. I ain't no, and then you're looking at your surrounding, you're super comfortable because all your homies around you, whatever, but you're not knowing who's plotting on you. I was the only one out of the whole group, I think, that didn't do Fed time or uh, is still an addict. Because you snitch. I <laughs> 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 he said, yo, it was the drugs, bro. I didn't know what I was saying. I, I, I didn't know. <laughs> See, I knew I had more with, in common with 6 9 <laughs> than I thought. Because <laughs> you Yeah, snitched. that was fucking funny. <laughs> <laughs> Did you all, snitch? No, yeah. absolutely not. 
Listen, they record those. <laughs> they record those interrogations. Milford Police, Bridge. Oh no, no. Listen, today. Put that shit out. Oh yeah, proper. paperwork is out there. And no, it's, and it's live. It's online. It's I've online. Never said name it to nobody. It's online. But listen, <laughs> all the people that got out mm. of either that are clean or got out of the feds are all Christians, like crazy. Oh Christians yeah. Now, uh, listen, you find spirituality <laughs> in there so fast. <laughs> Yo, yo, you, you have to, yo, dude. Listen, you have to. <laughs> because now you're sitting here because you got nothing else. Like, listen, this, this, this is why life is such a distraction, right? Because <laughs> as a kid, yeah, you grew up on it, you understand it. You, I mean, you're following it. But then when you're old enough to make your own decision, you're like, man, fuck that. I'm not doing that. I'm not going yeah. to church. I'm not doing that, right? But then soon as you get caught up in trouble, all of a sudden you're like, God, please. Bro, are you serious? <laughs> are you serious? God, please. <laughs> Bro, so isn't it crazy? They say there's they say there's no atheists in foxholes. That's a that's a statement. Yeah, that's the yeah. truth. A big thing. It's like, bro, as soon yeah. as you're laying on that, I, I was I've Dynamite been in ICU so, so many times, bro, bleeding, like having organs taken out of my body, and and that's when your relationship with God is the strongest, I bro. Promise you. So the biggest goal in life is trying to get your relationship with God on when the good days. Exactly. See, I I, 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 try, I try to at, avoid that. I try exactly. to avoid asking for stuff when I really need it because that feels wrong. Nah, but you got mm -hmm. it. You, know? <laughs> you, will, you will do. No, it. I know I do it. I do it. But that, well, that's part of. I mean, I I I thank God every day. That's my yeah. Version of of prayer, right? So when I do need something, it's not like a, hey, <laughs> could you help me? Hi, <laughs> no, sorry about what I said. Not a, <laughs> sorry, bro. I want to. I want to. So I want to get back to the music a little bit. Too. I, I had a call this morning with a, a friend of mine who's uh, uh, works in the in the industry in LA, just getting some some background. He's friends mm. with a guy named Steve Rifkin. Oh, I love Steve. That's my angel, man. That's my guardian angel. Like Steve, he's a uh, yeah. He saved my life without a doubt. He was he was the first person that believed in you, right? Yeah. He, well, he was the first person that signed me to a major label. There was a guy before him that believed in me named Divine Stevens. Yeah, so between those two, they definitely helped me change my life for sure. I'm curious when you realized you had a thing. Like you, you, you that's the were, thing. Were you I just singing your whole life. I just like I was just a hustler. I, like I was just gonna get rich or die trying, literally. Yeah. Like that was the model for real, right? <laughs> like not even joking, right? And however I was gonna get rich, I was gonna find a way because it was to me it was always about being accepted. And I realized in America the only way they really accepted you was when you had money. Mm -hmm. And I think that was a stigma that kind of followed me as a childhood coming here, getting to know friends and being made fun of because I was super black with nappy hair and African with an accent. Like that, it was like, this is why when you hear me speak English now, you don't hear no accent whatsoever. Like when I learned English, I needed to make sure that I had no accent whatsoever. Like when you hear my Latin records, like I got songs in Spanish, in every language basically, but when you listen to it, like I got a lot, I was, I was raised by Puerto Ricans and Dominicans in New Jersey. And when they hear my songs, they be like, dude, you sound like you from Puerto Rico or, or Dominican Republic. Like you can't even, you don't even hear the accent in it at all. Like that was always one of my things. Like when I speak, whatever language, I don't ever want to have an accent to where they think I was from anywhere else. Uh. So that, that, that's just how it happened. But for the most part, it opened up the door for me to say, okay, this is how I need to create an opportunity for me so they can see me as I am and not where I came from, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And just kind of blend in with the whole audience and move it around like that. You have a strange relationship with, uh, with some African uh, pop culture. You, you had watched a movie, uh, Coming to America. Yeah, that was, that was my <laughs> motto. When, I, when, when that movie worked, I was like, that's perfect. No one would never know that I'm not an African prince. Did you like, they would never know, right? And, and, and it was interesting because- What was when, his name again in it? What was his name in the movie, In Coming to America? Um, the um, what, 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 was, what was Eddie Murphy's name in, in Coming to America? Hey, you remember? You remember Eddie Murphy's name in Coming to America? It, it don't matter. It's a, uh, go ahead, go ahead, sorry. But, but anyway, so- the, yeah, yeah, Prince, 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 Prince Hakeem, yeah, Prince Hakeem, yeah, yeah. right? But so that I kind of, kind of used that all throughout high school, because you know, at that time, when I realized that drug dealing wasn't gonna be the thing for me, I got introduced to this Jamaican dude out of Newark who introduced me to the car game, right? So I went to Jersey, and he showed me in Newark, he showed me his whole operation, the chop shop, and the cars and everything, and he would like, he was like, listen, you get me a car for every car you bring to me, I give you twenty five hundred dollars. And I was like, oh, it's almost shit. as much as a key. <laughs> right. And the cars was even easier, right, to get, right? 
But in Jersey at that time, we was actually jacking cars. Like we just catch them at the drive-through or at the red light or whatever. Yeah. But that was also dumb because you just never, yeah, <laughs> like, never yeah, know. Stupid yeah. dumb, right? Yeah. I was like, hold on, I gotta find another way, right? This is <laughs> not gonna work. So then we start going to car dealerships and start grabbing them from the car dealerships. Are you hot wiring cars? No, at this time, I, I, to this day, I don't know how to hot wire. I never knew how to hot wire. So how did you get the keys? Exactly, that's the key. So <laughs> The key is the key. Right, the key is the key. <laughs> so when we used to go to the car dealerships, the dealers would leave car keys on the table all the time. Just leave them on the table and go assist the customer or take them off to a, you know, a, a um, test drive or something. And we would just peel the keys, like walk past, grab it, go to the bathroom, you know, look out the window, hit the button, see which light pops up. And then boom, we just get in and Whoa. dip out. So we bring the cars back every time. And then I start reading and kind of understanding, okay, what are the implications if I get caught in a stolen car? Now, if you jack a car, you do an automatic 10 years yeah, if you get caught. Yeah. I said, okay, no more of that. That's not ever happening again. Then I realized if you actually have the keys to the car and you get caught with it, it's a misdemeanor because you just get a joyride oh, charge. Oh, it's fantastic. So I was like, oh, this is perfect. <laughs> oh, we get out the same day or even get probation. This yeah. is perfect, yeah. right? Oh, this is my lick from here. So that became my, my thing. So then every time we turned the car in, he gave us a 25, but then I would have these cars and drive to school Every week I would be in a new car. One day a Porsche, another a BMW, uh, a Mercedes. So now I was like, man, this nigga got money. Actually, I didn't. I just played the role. So when the girls came, I'm like, yeah, you know, I'm a prince. You know what I'm saying? Yo, <laughs> shut <laughs> up. Yeah. And they would believe me because every time I came to school, I came in a new car. It was like, it was like the perfect, perfect lick. Isn't like Newark, is Newark, is Newark like the, the capital of, sto of stealing cars? At that time cars? it was, at that right? time it was. Yeah, and Newark the most was. stolen car I think for, have forever has been the Toyota Camry. Man. It's like, the, it, <laughs> every year is the number one most stolen car it's in like America. It's like, cause it, the, the Camry never had a, 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 a gear lock. So you can just take a screwdriver, pop it in and just start, and start But you car. don't know how to do that. No, nah, I, I don't know how to do any of that. <laughs> I don't know how to do any of that. <laughs> Man, you always, you got hustler in your blood, dude. hundred percent. It was natural. Yeah, it was natural. Bro, you, I mean, the music stuff is really hard to talk to you about because you have done collabs. You're, you're the king of collabs. I mean, I mean, dude, like Whitney Houston, Lionel Richie, Gwen Stefani, post, uh, uh, posthumous with, with Michael Jackson. Um, bro, it, the, the list goes on forever. I, the, we've, gotten to collab with a lot of people on this show and somebody a dream guest of ours which honestly I, I like to manifest but probably will never happen is Eminem and I want to ask you about that nah. collaboration Eminem yeah he would definitely do it have you guys reached out to him we I don't think we have Eminem would have. definitely bro, do when, the show when's the last time he even did a I'm gonna reach out to him he would definitely bro, do the show bro this is type of shit. Like, M would love this shit. It's really? just a conversation. 100 it, bro. We don't got no hard oh, yeah, questions. Nah, M, M would do this shit. I, I honestly believe M would do this shit. Without a doubt. He'd bro, love this type I'll of shit. I'll tell you what. If you make that, that happen, I'll give you equity? your choice. Five keys. Equity? <laughs> <laughs> equity and prime. Yo, equity and prime. You really got it, man. You hustled hard. <laughs> I was, I was going to say your choice of either 10 cameras or like, five I was about keys, to pick up the but... phone right now. Yo, listen. M, I got a play hey, for hey, you hey. right now, B. I split the equity hey, with you. Let's hey, do that's this. that's respect, bro. That's respect. Honestly, honestly. <laughs> but I wanna... if, if, you, if you can get M to co-host this show, you got equity, brother. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right, cool. I like the sound of that. <laughs> Me, Mikey, and Eminem <laughs> on the podcast. That would be big. He just doesn't seem like he does a lot of time. No, I, rem yeah. I remember when we were in Vegas <laughs> and we saw him and Dre that time, like so randomly, and that was the closest I'd ever even been to him. Remember, mm -hmm. I think Dre thought I was Adam Sandler or something because he was like, "Yo, what up?" And I was like. <laughs> <laughs> bro, bro, this is one of the weirdest moments. He was there. Yo, he goes, yo, what, he goes, it, yo, yo, what he up? Yeah, yeah, he does. Him, yo. He does. <laughs> oh shit. He goes, yo, what up? And I was like, what up, Dre? Like, what do you say back to that, bro? <laughs> and M's with him too. And I'm just yo. like, dude, like, you know, you don't know me at all, bro. So That's stop. So funny. <laughs> but, 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 all right. Tell me about this collab. What was it like working with them and that song? Because that was a huge success for you. Right. No, that that was amazing, man. I actually, um. I got to M through Obi Trice, actually. Obi Trice, real name, no gimmicks. Real name, no gimmicks. <laughs> <laughs> I know my right? shit. Yeah, so I had reached out to Rosenberg first, his yep. manager. Yep, of course. And Rosenberg was like, no problem, we'll make it happen. But everybody knows that Rosenberg, he's like a, he's like a bulletproof vest. Like, you gotta go through him to get to M without a doubt. Yep. I said, yo, 
I need this shit fast. And I know Rose gonna go through the whole process, due diligence. He gonna go through, I need to get that, I need to get to him before he does. <laughs> Cause like, you know. So I called Obi, I said, yo Obi, where you at? He said, I'm in Detroit. I said, oh shit, where's M? He said, she probably in the studio. I said, I need you to make an introduction for me. He said, yeah, yeah, when you coming down? I said, I'm about to book my flight right now. You gonna be there tomorrow? He said, yeah, come, come. So I booked my flight, get there. Obi picks me up from the airport and takes me to this strip club because I got there at night. We go to the strip club, we have an amazing time. This, the morning before, he takes me to the studio. I said, what time we need to get there? He said, yo, be ready at 8.30. I'm like, that's early as fuck. Like, <laughs> this is before I had discipline, right? Yeah. Oh, that's early as shit. He said, bro, trust me, if you ain't there at 8.30, just be there at 8.30. I said, all right, cool. I get there at 8.30, meet with Obi. We get to the studio around 9, 9.30. M is in the studio, right? I'm ready to walk in. He's like, yo, wait, wait, he's working on something. So I wait. <laughs> I'm being very polite and shit. M comes out, yo, yo, what's up, what's up, what's up? So he connect, Obi's like, yo, man, I just want you to meet Kyle. I know y'all haven't met, whatever. I know y'all know each other, but y'all get to go. He connects us, he's like, I right, peace, I'm out. Obi gets out of there, he gone. M plays me, he's like, so, you know, let me hear what you at. I played him some records and he's like, you know, I said, play me some stuff. He said, well, I produce. I said, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> he said, yeah, I got beats. I said, you ain't got no motherfucking beats. <laughs> he said, no, I'm serious. So he played me beats and I'm sitting here listening to these beats. I'm like, all these shit sound like Eminem beats. Like, if he rapped on any one of them beats, the shit would be a hit without yeah. a doubt. Then he played the smack that beat. Ding, 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 ding. Yeah. I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> I said, yo, I think this is it, E. Yeah. So now, mind you, at this point, M knows I'm a producer as well. So in my mind, I'm like, no, this would be even doper if he produced the record. Like, and it's more motivation for him to follow through and make the shit happen. Yeah, totally, Hustler, totally. You know, because I'm like, no, this gotta be an Eminem record yeah. no matter how the fuck. I just wanna be a feature on yeah. this motherfucker. Man, he goes to lunch. By the time he came back, the song was done. He heard it, he's like, oh fuck, this is a hit. <laughs> I said, yo, it'd be bigger if you jumped on it. He said, nah, you know what? You're right, this shit is dope. <laughs> All right, cool, I'll see you tomorrow. <clears throat> he leaves. He comes back the next day. He has a verse on that motherfucker. Like, oh, 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 oh shit. <laughs> now I'm thinking, okay, whose record is it gonna be? Is it gonna be mine or is yeah, it gonna be his, yeah. right? So he plays me the verse. I was like, yo, yeah, man, this is the best shit I ever heard you do. Yeah. Man. I said, we should put it on your album. He said, nah, I thought it was for your album. <laughs> I said, you think so? He said, hell yeah, this is your shit. I said, Cool, in my mind, I'm celebrating. I'm like, yeah, for <laughs> sure, dude, for sure. <laughs> right? So we did three records that day. That was the record that he ended up jumping on. The other two, I held them till this day, I still got them. Whoa. I still got those two records. I haven't released them yet. Whoa, whoa. You got unreleased Eminem. No, 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 M ain't on them oh, yet. Oh, just though. Eminem, Eminem produced, produced beats. That he produced, that he produced, right? And in my mind, I'm saying, okay, I'm gonna wait to further down the line, maybe album number four or five, and I'm gonna come back to him and replay these records. I know he gonna forget all about it. <laughs> you feel me? Yo, put it on the album. Yeah. Oh, oh, I, I, I gotta get back. I gotta get back to Detroit and remind him of those records though. Cause those, out of all the records, those three was like out of here. Whoa. Like, out of here. That's so cool. Yeah, you know but, what's that amazing story by the way, but you know what's so funny about that? The way he went through it and he was like, it was eerily reminiscent of situations I've been in with you. It's reverse psychology. No, no, no. <laughs> no, this is reverse. Because, because like, he knew not to go at Paul because Paul's like the defense mechanism, which which is like manager yeah, Jeff. Jeff. Yeah. And I'm like Obi Trice. You know how many, <laughs> yeah, you know yeah, how many yeah. people have come to me and been like, yo, you think you can get me to Logan, Eminem? Right. I'm like, yeah, but you got to come with me to the strip club first. You right, know what yeah, I'm yeah. saying? <laughs> Bro, I've been through that shit like 50 it's, fucking it's, times. It's, it's, it's and, like, and by the way, Rosenberg, probably hit Obi up the next day and said, if you ever fucking do, do that, that again, yeah. I'm gonna fucking, fucking kill you. Kill you. Yeah. And do you know how many yeah. times manager Jeff has said that exact same shit to me, bro? <laughs> so no, because times, see, bro. Th th these are methods that you just learn in the street. Like you never go to the plug directly. Yeah. You go to the plug's main man. Right hand man, yeah. Cause it's more, he feels more comfortable. Yeah. And he's like, well, he's, you know, any friend of Obi's is a friend of mine. And he's know? usually yeah. problematic. And, the right and, hand is at the strip club. He always got a vice. Yeah. He got a vice. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The right hand always got a vice. You can buy him. You know what I'm saying? You can bribe the right yeah, hand. Exactly. You know <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, me and M turned out to be super cool. Crazy. That, man. It's like, that's my dog. But 
What was over there? Michael, Michael Jackson. Jackson. Yeah, po a posthumous uh, song with Michael Jackson. Right. What does that mean to you? What does that even mean to you, bro? I'm still trying to define the meaning. Like, just imagine growing up as a child, listening to Mike, like idolizing Mike, and then being in the studio with Mike. One thing I can tell you, though, was that at the time when I did work with Mike, I had worked with practically every artist on the planet, it seemed like, as a writer or producer or even featured on. But Mike was the easiest artist that I ever worked with. Wow. No ego. Wow. Super prepared, on time, and just super excited, ready to work every day. Like, and this was interesting because when he first contacted me, I didn't think it was him. You know, I had no idea. Like, I, I thought my attorney was like pulling my leg because me and him actually shared the same attorney, which I didn't know. All this time, you represented Michael Jackson. That's attorney you, client playroom. Really. Right. I'm like, <laughs> fuck that shit. Like, that's Michael Jackson. Yeah. Like, but he, you know, he put me on the phone. He said, yo, Mike, want to get a hold of you. And I thought, I thought he was joking, you know? And I was like, oh, whatever. So he called me back again. This time he had Michael Jackson actually on the phone. <laughs> Bro. So he right. said, listen, I, you know, I, I got Mike on three way. Mike. Mike was like, hey, you come. And I was like, Fuck out of here. I hung up the phone. I literally hung up the phone. No. I hung up the phone. Like, like stop playing with me. No. Like, like, then he called me again. And I was like, stop playing with my phone, man. This is not a joke. You know how much I like Mike. Like, don't play with me like that. And he's like, no, it's, it's literally, it's Mike seriously. And Mike's like, yes, Akon, it's me. It's me. And I'm like, D, like Michael Jackson, like I'm like a fucking groupie right now. Yo, I'm funny. so embarrassed to tell a story sometimes because I was acting like a little bitch. Like, no, nah, not Mike. Like, the Michael, like Michael Jackson, like Jackson Prime, <laughs> Michael Jackson, like. <laughs> he said, yeah, yeah. He said, um, how would you like to come to Vegas? And I was like, hell yeah, when? Like, <laughs> yeah. he said, don't worry, we're gonna send a plane for you to come tomorrow. And I was like, he said, will you be available? I said, yeah, fuck yeah. If I'm not, I'm gonna change everything to come. The next day I actually flew in. This was the kicker. I get to the airport, the car is waiting for me. I get off the plane, jump in the car, and we're riding. We're on our way to the wind. As we're going through the wind, we pass the front entrance and go around the side. Bro, there's a, I don't know if I'm even supposed to be talking about this, but there's an entrance that you don't even see off the road. It's almost like the street kind of lifts up. You go in and the shit falls back down. No, nah, come on. Bro, I don't know what kind of fucking entrance this was. Yeah. But bro, I get into the entrance and we're driving in. It's like a tunnel and it's like, it goes straight to an elevator. We get in the elevator, there's only one button that takes you all the way to the Whoa. very top floor. Oh, some bad Oh, this shit. is It's the, some different shit. No, this shit. is the Illuminati. And you got there and they were harvesting organs, right? <laughs> <laughs> tell, just tell they the fucking truth right now, Akon. Tell the world about what they're <laughs> right. doing there, bro. No, so. <laughs> we get in the crawl. elevator, right? His security guard, Muhammad, lets us up. We go all the way to the top. As we get in, we get in the elevator. There's another long hallway. At the end of the long hallway, there's these double doors and we're going down the double doors. Like everything is just like anticipation. This is eerie. No, it's almost like, it was almost like, it felt like it was choreographed. Like everything about Mike is choreographed. Uh. Like he's a star in every sense of the word. Uh. Like, like you're entertained from the moment they say his name. Yeah. B biggest, e biggest ever? What, out of doubt. Biggest of all time. Now I can see why Prince was so frustrated. Yep. Cause Mike was different. Yeah. Like you couldn't, you can't even compare. Not yeah. close. We're walking to the doors. Muhammad opens the doors. I walk in. Mike is sitting there. Chair, back. It spins. Yo, come on. No, no way. <laughs> no Yo, way. <laughs> fucking superstar. Yo, I didn't know. Hey, listen. <laughs> Why? I didn't know. I didn't know what was about to happen How long when was he, he turned to there? me. I was like, I, I better not fucking faint. I like, I better not act like a bitch. Like, yeah, yeah. bruh, as soon as Mike turned around, yo, God, what's up? Sorry. Bro, I swear, it was like we known each other for a thousand years and reconnected. Whoa. I was so shocked because it was like, he knew everything about me, like, as, like literally everything about me. And I knew everything, obviously everything about him, but I was so shocked the fact that, surprised and also excited that he literally knew everything about me. Yeah. Like, I was just, I didn't know, I didn't even know what to do. That's to take a, it. That's a moment. No, no, bro, he's the best. But he was a king of disguises. 
Really? He could, like, he would be standing right next to you, and you would not even know. No him. way. My first ever IMAX theater experience was with, with Mike Jackson. He took me, he said, yo, Khan, this is something you have to see. You gotta see this, this is amazing, it's the future. He's like, it's 101 Dalmatians, and it looks like they're coming out of the screen. <laughs> no, but like, it's so, it my was, favorite thing is hearing like, Michael Jackson's like, menial tasks. Right. Like, like um, I would pay to watch him go grocery <laughs> shopping. <clears throat> like, what do you think he would get? Would he get Cheez-Its? No, like, you know what I'm saying? Interestingly <laughs> enough, Mike was actually a big kid. A, a thousand percent. When I went to his house, it's like his, he had a room filled with candy. Like, I love candy. Like, that was like my room. Like, literally candy everywhere. But he said, let's go to the movies. And in my mind, I'm like, fuck out of here. You can't go to the movies. Like, you're fucking Michael Jackson. So I'm waiting for him to get dressed so we can go to the movies. And this, this guy comes out, sits. We're watching TV for a second. So I'm like, it's 15, 20 minutes. Like, damn, where's Mike? I'm going to the movies? Mike was like, oh, I was waiting for you. Let's go. Sure. <laughs> it was like, him. It was, it was fucking him. him. What was the disguise? Oh my! So listen, I'm gonna tell you. In a minute. <laughs> Just sitting next to you. He's sitting right next to me. I thought it was one of his guests. Why would he say anything? No, because he, 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 he probably he has does, fun. He with does this shit. shit like yeah, that. Yeah, hundred percent. But he's super funny though. Like yeah. you fucking love him. You, uh, you can like you fucking love him. So now we're going to the to the, to the to the movies. We get to the movies. Also was at the win, the IMAX experience thing. We get there. We're at the elevator. And as we're going up the elevator, these group of kids see us and start running towards us, waiting for us to get to the top of the elevator. And they're running. I'm like, oh, shit, they done fucking saw Michael Jackson. It's over. Damn, we're not going to be able to get the fuck out of here. We get to the top of the elevator, and they all come running to me. I knew you were going to say that. Right? Yeah. Right, so they're running to me. Oh, my God, hey, Con, can we get a picture? Oh, my God, can we get an autograph? Right? And Mike just sitting there like, <laughs> just giggling, right? And in my mind, I'm like, if they only knew who yeah, was standing yeah, like really yeah. right next to me, right? So now I'm taking pictures. We're kind of slowly running late. And there's a whole other group of kids over there. And Mike is like, hey, guys, you want to take a picture with Akon? Look, he's right oh here. He's God. right here. <laughs> so now we're 20 minutes late because he had more kids coming. The whole time he's up there just giggling So laughing. he's just always fucking around. Always. Just always. Yeah. All, but super, I mean, just the most amazing dude. And I, what, what I loved about him the most was that his own, his, his biggest sacrifice and his main purpose was to always make sure in his life that kids lived comfortable. He always like donated money to and built hospitals and orphanages. Like he always, cause he, he, in his mind, he never had the childhood as, cause he was a celebrity as a child. So he never had to experience or experience that. It was like his aging got stunted. Right. By, and development got stunted by that fame. And but it happens it to did. a lot of people. You know, it like he, like he was an adult fast. Like he yeah. was literally, like rehearsing all the time, always working, you know, he's dealing about dealing with money and all this at, at an age like that. So when he got older, he just wanted to live out his childhood, you know? So he built this huge, you know, theme park and everything they did was always for fun, like candy and cakes and stuff all over the place. And he just wanted kids around the world to actually enjoy being a child while you are a child. Mm -hmm. And it was hurting for me to see how the media would try to take that and try to flip it to make it seem like he was some kind of, uh -huh. you know, child. Or some shit, though. That shit was horrible, man. Because uh, uh. when you meet him, you'll be like, this, this he has a pure soul, bro. Interesting. Like, pure soul. Interesting. Interesting perspective yeah. as well, man. <sighs> well, it's a Jesus. unique perspective as someone who's done, like actually hung out and spent time you with him. You have so many stories. Oh, yeah. So many stories. The truth. How many lives do you think you've lived, Akon? I don't know. <laughs> you gotta feel like more than one. I mean, yeah, definitely feel like more <laughs> than one. I feel like I got a, a couple of lives for sure. Damn, dude. Yeah. There, I, when I was preparing for this episode today, I was I said, bro, I'm in deep trouble because there's just so much to talk about, bro. Yeah, like there's just yeah, so many yeah, these things. episodes are hard. There's just it, it could go on forever. I want to ask you. I wanted to ask you about you know some of the the, the not so fun shit to talk about. Right. But you know we don't have to do no, that. That's we not can the, keep that's it not light the vibe. and happy today. <laughs> that, was, that was great, dude. I mean. Man, you're you're like I said, so much deeper than your music, which makes sense. For I mean, sure. now now sitting with you, it, it it makes sense why you are the 360 degree entertainer, entrepreneur, business guy, right. husband, father that you are. Uh, one, one quick one, uh, Boo, your brother, yeah, right? Are you are you is uh is he working with Central C? Because uh, well, I saw I keep seeing him posted about it. He's a, he's a, he's at Columbia, right? Yeah, he's at Columbia. Yeah, he's, <laughs> he signed him over here to here in the U.S. Got it. Because he yeah. was at Rolling Loud last night. Yep, he was there. Yeah. We was all together. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Sorry to sorry to cut you off. No, go ahead, I just go ahead. I just it, I wanted to ask him about Boo because he had a management stint with Kanye. There's just so much shit, dude. I'm yeah. sorry. I'm sorry. You're wrapping up. Go for it. No. Great show. Thanks for coming on. No, thank you, you for coming it. on. It. No, it's fine. It's fine. Sorry. I apologize. No, it's fine. It's but fine. listen, at the end of the day, this is family anyway. Yeah. And Hero will tell you, I'm in Miami all the time. Like I will, I will honestly, I, will, I think I might start bum rushing your show. Yo, you should. <laughs> when you I'm should. in town, I'm just gonna pop up on y'all. Hey, when we <laughs> like, when we have a crazy guest on to come up show up, that'll be hilarious. Out of nowhere, bro, bro. The, the first time we met, I was chilling at my buddy's house in Puerto Rico. Right. And Akon rounds the corner. I'm like, what the <laughs> fuck is he doing? I was I was shocked. I was shocked. Yeah. What a great night. Nah, for sure. We and me and me end up hanging out the whole night. And yeah, shit, like, yeah, yeah. Dude, yeah. it's it's been an honor to have <laughs> nah, you on, man, been, and, and have this conversation. Dude, thanks for blessing us with your presence. No, absolutely. Akon, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. I'm going to Akon City when it's done. Yeah, you oh, yeah, to. I want to come out. No, you have to, bro. I was told you by uh, to. Caleb, who runs Impulsive, mm -hmm. to tell you, the audience, to rate us five stars on Spotify and iTunes. It'll help our, our ratings, and we would like to get boosted in the charts. And also hit that subscribe button. Uh, man, and go stream some Akon music. And go stream some Akon music. Apple right now. <laughs> there you go. Thanks for listening, watching, viewing, guys. We'll see you next time. Take it easy. Peace.